Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. I'm back. Come on in. I was on early doing brunch with oodles of noodles, and now I'm back to do Sunday dinner. So, what's on the menu today for Sunday dinner? Something real. It's going to take a little while, but it's real simple. I've got some seasoned chicken thighs here. They were skinless, boneless. I didn't have to do all that cutting into them and all that kind of stuff. So, they were, they were ready to go. Uh, so what I did, I put, I mixed up all my seasonings together here. This is not onion powder. This is a mixture of onion powder, garlic powder, complete seasoning, black pepper, and some of my, um, just all kinds, of, every, it's, it's like everything but the kitchen sink. Maybe the kitchen sink may be in there out of my cabinet. I always like to combine all my seasoning. That way I don't have to use, you know, keep using uh, every bottle. So just whatever seasoning you have in your cabinet, just go ahead and drag them out and mix them together and you'll have it all together. And then I put um, some sesame sesame seed oil on there just to give it an extra little kick. I've got olive oil in the pan real nice and hot. So what I'm going to do is start putting these chicken thighs in here. I've got them in. This is um, one thing to Everybody's been asking me about what kind of cookware. I thought I had told me about it, but maybe you missed it. This cookware is called Eurocast. And I ordered it online. Um, and you can't order it. I didn't order mine online. I bought it on base. Um, if you know anything about the Eurocast, they have vendors to come around to the base exchange. And that was one of the vendors one day when I was out there. But you can't order it online. Okay? And it's called Eurocast by Bergdahl. It's a German cookware and it's titanium. Uh, it's made out of titanium. So it's very durable, healthy, and supposedly the waterless cook. Uh, the water, you know how you use number one waterless cooking came out. And they have a lot out on the market now. You don't really have to use water uh, for anything in, in the cookware. It's really durable. It's nice. Um, and I love it. I love it. It cooks well. It reminds me of cast iron cooking. But it holds all that heat and it just cooks really, really well. I think I've got 12, yeah, I think I've got 12 fives in here. 10 or 12. Yeah. So anyway, this is going to be a plenty. So this is our Sunday dinner for today. Go ahead and get these going. I think I can fit six in there at a time. And I'm going to cook them on each side for about seven minutes. And then when I turn them over um, and get them going, I'm going I'm going to use the same pan. Um, let me show you just one thing about this cookware while it's cooking. Okay, you can, can you see that? Okay, you can take this handle off. All this part here will be packaged, and I'm going to put it into the oven and finish it off. So for right now, though, I'm going to leave my handle on. See, that's my handle. That's a nice long handle. I'm going to leave my handle on, on the back burner there. I've got my brown sugar and butter melting. So when these finish, I can make that glaze. It's going to go over these and go in the oven. And it'll be just, um, you know, a little bit of uh, juice to put over that, to serve over that rice. So we're going to cook these seven minutes. And they'll be pretty much done. I won't finish them off in the oven. Because, you know, five minutes takes a little bit longer to cook. And... I'm just going to cook like that. So that's going to be the chicken dish. Um, now, I'm still deciding what I'm going to do with the, uh, how I'm going to do this. Uh, I got broccoli, some broccoli, some regular broccoli, and some onions that I'm going to mix up together. And I want to make a, um, some of the, um, I don't know if you can call it a, uh, something like a casserole. It's, the reason I'm calling it a casserole, I think I'm going to make a cheese sauce, a fluff or a cream sauce with cheese in it to pour over it and do some bread crumbs on top just to make it a little bit different. And then I'm going to do some uh, fresh green beans. I'm doing all these veggies because I bought all this stuff and I need to use it. I don't want to let it spoil. And what better day to do it than on Sunday dinner day. Okay? So these are cooking nicely. Yeah, these are going to be so good. They smell wonderful, y'all. You just won't believe how great they smell. So we're just going to let those continue to cook. And we're at 
four minutes now so far. I'm cooking these in real time. Now the um, prep process, of course, took me about 10 minutes, so yeah, 10 minutes for that. And then when I get them out of the pan, I'm gonna cook them another 30 minutes. So you figure a good hour to do this entire dish uh, for the chicken. And then the, the you know, the, the broccoli, casserole, the uh, rice and all that, will probably take 30 minutes off together. Let's see what these are looking like. I don't want to, okay, these are looking like what I want them to look like. So we're at, right at 6 minutes, 545. So we're going to flip these at 545, okay? They are beautiful. I like that color at 6 minutes because I think I had to heat up a little bit. You see how pretty those are? I love, love that. I don't want to get any darker than that. And when they cook another same amount of time on the other side, so we crunch it all together. <coughs> we're going to we're gonna cook these 10 minutes. I might have two pans of these now. So if you only got a one pan, then you'll be in and out and you'll be okay. So I'm going to start putting these others in because all I want to do is get them pretty and brown and pretty much cooked. And then I'm just going to take them out of the pan. And as they cook like I want them, I'll just start stacking them over on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and put in another batch. And in a few minutes, I can start stacking them on top of each other. That way, I can get them all in here. Okay, so while that's cooking, I'm going to switch over, excuse <coughs> me, and I'm going to go ahead and get started with my um, stir-fried veggies and my green beans. You know, green beans are pretty straightforward. These green beans are, they're called snipped green beans. And really, they're saying you can cook them right in this bag here, but I think I want to break my, these are a full-size green beans, but I, I'm thinking I want to cook them, um, I'm going to snap them in half, I believe. And we're going to go ahead and cook the green beans, and um, I might just try this. So, you know what, I have never, ever cooked these in the bag. I just might. Let me just give me a minute. Give me a minute. It says make a recipe with uh, mean sweet peppers and green beans. That might be the thing to do. We'll see. However, for right now, we're going to go ahead and uh, keep going with the chicken. And we're, I'm going to switch the burners and let the chicken on the other side. That way I can go ahead and get my stir fry started over here on this side. And you can watch as we do the stir fry. Now, this is one of my wok pans. Of course, I have put uh, my olive oil in. Y'all know that's my um, olive oil is always my oil of choice. Let that get nice and hot. And as soon as it gets nice and hot, we're going to go ahead and start stir frying these veggies. And I'm going to use the same pan because, like I said, this cookware can go right into the oven. That's why I'm, I'm still contemplating if I'm going to do that cheese sauce. I think I am because I already got my cheese, and my milk, and all that stuff ready. So I'm going to make a light cheese sauce to go over these veggies here just to make them a little bit different. I'm going to sort of bake them like a casserole. And we're hoping that's going to turn out. And I, I think it'll turn out pretty good. Okay, so we're going to get this. Make sure you get this pan nice and hot. Anytime you're doing stir fry, you know you want it as hot as you can possibly get it. Go ahead and turn these over over here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm still working with the chicken. Can y'all see me over here? Yeah, y'all still see me. I'm still putting chicken into the pan over here on this other burner. And I'm, while I'm letting this pan here, you have to multitask when you're in the kitchen, y'all. Y'all know how to multitask. You know, same thing you do when you're at work. If you have these jobs where you have to multitask, it simply means doing more than one thing at a time. And you know what? I think for the most part, ladies, 
we've always multitasked because if you got, especially if you got children, honey, you have to be cooking the dinner, getting the clothes ready, whatever you do, you have three or four things to do at one time. So we have to learn how to multitask anyway. And I don't know if the corporate industry thinks that they made up that term, but I think I've had to multitask all my life as far as back as I can, even, even as a child, I multitask. I'm trying to cut one of these in half here. That was kind of a big one. Okay, there we go. Ooh, I'm sure these um, thighs are sort of big, so I'm sort of cutting them. Remember I told you, I always keep you a pair of cooking shears in the kitchen, y'all. Okay, so this is hot. You have to be careful with this. This stuff gets hot all over. So one thing about this cookware, you have to have a some kind of a, of a, a dish cloth on hand when you're using it so you can hold it. Now, I can do tap, tap, tap with it, but you can't do a lot of... of uh, I'm starting to stack this chicken, y'all. Okay. And okay, that's perfect. That worked out perfect because I'm now I'm going to just dump all this in. Okay, so That's my brush, that's my uh, Brussels sprouts. I got Brussels sprouts and broccoli, and I have a little bit of broccoli, the baby broccoli in there, and of course the onions are in there. Okay, now I'm just gonna sprinkle some of my mixture of seasoning on there. Once it's real good. All right, everything is cooking and smelling so wonderful, y'all. This smells wonderful. Oh. Oh. I'm also going to, I'll be putting some butter in. I know I'm trying to get closer to the camera because a couple times y'all were telling me you couldn't hear me talking over the sizzle. Okay. Alrighty, everything is cooking. Ooh, I want to pull up this chair and get this plate and sit down and start eating there, y'all. This food plate smells so wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And I guess some of y'all probably wondering how this going to work out if I do a um, sort of cheese sauce over these uh, stir fry. Why don't I just leave it? Well, because I want to make it a little bit different today. I'm just going to take a pan and I'm just going to melt some cheese down and just make something real nice and clean to pour over it. And uh, we'll see. We will see. Yeah, good, you all. Okay, so we're on 14 minutes now. Mm. Yeah, that, that seasoning mixture is perfect, y'all. It's perfect. I made, I made it perfect. I mean, I don't know what to do. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just getting some broccoli on. Oh, I got more Brussels sprouts to put in there. Oh, crap. I know my pan was looking white, but I was thinking to myself the whole time. I think I'm gonna have no more Brussels sprouts in there. Okay, so <coughs> that's the rest of the Brussels sprouts. I had them in two separate bags. Y'all know by now, y'all know I love those more Brussels sprouts. I love me some Brussels sprouts. So. Is everything cooking in here? I see a whole one. A little, little bit more seasoning. Because I had to add some to it. Okay, so I got the major part of this meal going. I'm going to come back and do the green beans. Um, this kind of chicken. Make sure when you're doing your chicken, make sure you keep it fine and you know you want it to be a certain color on it. And once you get that certain color on it, you're good to go. Okay, I got a few, a couple of whole Brussels sprouts in here I'm looking at. And all I'm going to use is cut them. I like to cut my Brussels sprouts in half. They cook, you know, better and they cook more evenly when they're Either open them up or cut them in half, either way will work. Okay. Now these vegetables, um, you know, you have to, you know, make sure you wash them real good and everything like that. So, and I got one in there that doesn't want to cooperate. So what I'm going to do, I won't need to see it with these buffer sprouts now. Y'all got to come on a couple of them just if you want me to cut them. Oh, I'm going to cut them. I'm going to out anyway. I got real mouthful. Okay. So now, the veggies are just about finished with the stir fry process. A couple of brush spots you'll have to cook. But we're going to cut off and come right back. And by the time I come back, I'll be ready to put everything together. So y'all hang tight for me. And we're back. It's time to get the chicken in the oven. I'm going to set this at 375, y'all, and we're going to get it into the oven, and um, what I'm going to do just simply is, I'm going to whisk this up. <clears throat> this is a sweet and sour, um, ready-made um, sauce, and then I added brown sugar and butter to it, so for this amount of chicken, I'm going to say, okay, I, this was like a food line brand, you know. The little sweet and sour different ones that they have okay i got the sweet and sour one and i added um this is probably to a 10 ounce jar let's get this milk off of here see what i say about multitasking okay so you can just mix sweet and sour season already mixed some brown sugar and butter and if you want to add like a little black pepper in there to give it a little oomph that'll work fine too and just you know mix it up real good till it looks like that or you can use some teriyaki season already mixed if you want the sweet flavor onto your um meat so what i did what i'm doing here just simple like just like so like this let's pour it right on top of that pour the rest of that in there <clears throat> thought i wasn't gonna need it but i see now where i do and I'm just going to pour it in here. Remember, I'm put, this is the same pan that I cooked it in. So I'll leave just a tad out. Set this out of the way. And remember, I'm going to take the handle off of this pan so that I can go ahead and put it into that 375 degree. Just make sure that your sauce is all under the bottom so it cooks up through there. Okay. 
I don't want to put too, too much on there because I want it to uh, glaze. I really want it to glaze. So I think there's enough in the bottom of the pan. I don't like to, you know, put too, when I'm doing the sauce, I don't like to make it swimming, swimming necessarily in sauce. If I think anybody wants extra, they can uh, put it. So we want to get it like that, but make sure that it's on the bottom. <clears throat> and then the tops will more or less glaze. And when we get ready to serve it, just lay it right on top of that rice. So I'm gonna go ahead and I love these this cookware. So you just slide that handle off and it's ready to go into the oven. I'm gonna leave it open. And I'm probably gonna miss this hot. I'm gonna have to get another dish towel. Hang on. This is going, my friends into my 375 degree oven for about 35, 40 minutes. It's already made it done, so there it goes into the oven. Now, next thing while we're rolling, got my stir fried veggies already. And then what I'm gonna do next is get this little sauce going. I got a cup and three fourths of milk in that pan over there. Let's get this going. That's where you can see it. And I'm getting ready to make me just a light, just it's gonna be a light cheese sauce. This is just regular cheddar cheese, y'all. Uh, okay. This is a 16-ounce bag of cheddar cheese. So what I put in there is pretty much 12 ounces of that 16 ounces. Hmm. You have to start this out slow when you're doing cheese and milk. You don't want it to burn yet. Now, so remember, you heat your milk up first. Get it nice and warm. Not too warm. Because if you heat it too much, it's going to sort of stick on the bottom. So you see how that cheese is starting to melt already? So I'm going to pull it off the heat. Now, I got some flour water waiting on the side just in case I need to... Oh, let me turn that heat down just in case I need to thicken this at all. And I think I might not even need to thicken it, but just a little bit because when it cooks, I don't want it to be too much. So now we got some nice, mm. and that, you know what? With 12 ounces of cheese and a cup and three fourths of milk, that sauce is just about where I want it. So now to true it up a little bit, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of my chicken bouillon seasoning. Okay. Just a little bit. Just to true it up. Maybe an eighth of a teaspoon either. That's about all I need in there. Because remember, our veggies are already seasoned. Okay. So that's a nice, I like the texture of that already. You see, I didn't have to do a whole lot, but make sure my milk was nice and hot. Mm. Yeah. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit, this is flour water. I make a lot, you know, flour water. I mean, you never know how much you're going to need. Okay. I need it a little bit thicker, okay? Okay. Let's see. We're gonna let it sit a minute. We wanna make sure whether or not we need it any thicker. Okay. Now I had some sour cream sitting somewhere. I'm gonna sour look here. It is. Okay. I'm gonna ease a little sour cream off in there. What I'm Sour cream, well, that one's finished. Thank God I got another one. I'm gonna put about a fourth of a cup of sour cream in here. Okay. Well, I reckon it's okay. I don't know what you have to do to it. You have to take the top off and you have to pull the little inner tab out, y'all. See that little inner tab? 
I just, I guess I didn't remember doing it to the other one when I was getting ready to use it. But anyway, not a lot. I'm going to say a couple of tablespoons of that sour cream. Okay. And you know what? If you want to put other cheeses, you can put like feta cheese. I got feta cheese over there, but I don't want to overpower it with a lot of cheese. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Y Not a lot of cheese. But just nice and creamy though. A little bit more of my flour water. And you know, if, you, if I have any of this left, I can always, always, always put it in the fridge and use it for another time. Okay? Um, let's see. We're going to put a little bit of onion powder in that. A little bit of onion powder. Okay. About a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And we, what we're working on now is consistency, okay? I've got breadcrumbs. Yeah, here they are, right up here. Breadcrumbs. I've got some breadcrumbs. So, what I'm going to do, get our veggies over here. I was going to bake them right in here in this pan, but I think I've got this baking dish that I'll be able to... This is my, I want to just try this out. I bought this little square pan the other day for things such as this, and I think this was going to work just fine. So, now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my cheese sauce in here. I'm not going to put all of it quite yet. Just going to mix that cheese sauce right in. Mm. Yeah. Mix it just like that. And I think that's going to be a plenty of the cheese sauce, okay? Using the wrong spoon. Okay, let's go here. And this is what our mixture should look like at this point. And I'm going to put it into the oven long enough for all that cheese to sort of bake through there and it'll be like a little casserole like I said it'll be something a little bit different that's absolutely wonderful okay so now what I'm going to do next is simply put it into a pan that I've already showed you I'm going to put a little spray on this pan Spray my pan real, real good. And because I want this, you know, I don't want this to be real, real runny, and, and at the same time, I don't want it too tight either. I'm going to put me a little bit more of that flour water in there. Just to ensure that it's going to tighten up. Notice I didn't put any egg in there. I didn't want that consistency. I did not want that consistency. And this is going to I think in about 30 minutes this ought to be okay because what it's going to do is just cook that cheese through there and there we go it's not a lot of salt the only salt is what was into the um to, to the different seasons so my chicken is in i'm getting ready to put my casserole in all i've got left to do is do my string beans and my rice and this meal will be ready y'all so y'all hang tight Okay, y'all, dinner is ready. The chicken is out of the oven. It's nice and glazed with that um, sweet and sour and brown sugar sauce over it. Okay, that's the um, veggie, cheesy, uh, broccoli, and um, Brussels sprout casserole. Of course, there's the basmati rice and those green beans. So dinner is served, y'all. One hour and a half, I started out at two o'clock, it's 3.30 when I finish, so one hour and a half to include prep time. You know, um, these dishes like this, they are so good and so tasty, and um, 
they're just something that, you know, you fix right quick, but yet it takes an hour and a half. You know, for a Sunday dinner, it's not too bad. So, listen, guys, thank y'all for dropping by. Thank you for your prayers, your well wishes, and also the wonderful comments that you're putting on the channel. And I'm doing my best to answer you all. Again, the cookware that I use, which is this one right here, this is called Uricast, and it is a... Uh, really a good cookware set it cooks it holds heat it doesn't take and it cooks food faster too by the way so you have to you know you get it real good and hot and set it like it tells you on the direction and it does just exactly what it says it's going to do it's a waterless cooking and it's just wonderful i love it it holds heat real good you have to watch out now so you don't burn your hands because you have to have a towel there it's hot to the touch they've cooled down some now but uh, and i'm going to take care of them better i got to get me some um some kind of plastic uh spoons and stuff to use but it's very doable because it's made of titanium but you still want to take good care of it so listen guys until i decide to cook again keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down pray without ceasing y'all do something kind for someone cook yourself some good food listen a good word or a deed or a little piece of money through cash app will make anybody smile so uh, pray for me as I pray for you. Be kind to someone today. Uh, and remember, we're going to just start saying more often, if you can't say something good, don't say nothing at all. Just hold it till you can. The Word of God teaches us that we should be kind and good as often as possible. And that little tongue can sort of hurt people at times. So just be uh, ever so aware of it. So listen, guys, until I decide to cook again, love you guys so much. Um, and of course we're in a whole nother month now we're in april it's a beautiful beautiful april my sister uh eva or evie as i call her in atlanta her birthday is on the fifth so happy birthday evie if you're listening in love you hope you have a great day on your birthday until i decide to cook again y'all love you guys oh study up on a little bit of black history and you know what even though women's history month just left still as you're studying your black history study women's history Women made some great, great contributions, and as you study the black history, you'll see that women did a lot of things that we don't even begin to know about. So, listen, guys, and guys, too, you all do stuff just as well, so just study history in general so we can know what, what happened way back when and how it's um, made a change on what we do today and how we still use some of those great inventions, especially. So, listen, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember, pray without ceasing. Keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down. Toodaloo.